LaSalle County, Texas. Nearly 1,500 square miles. Today, it's at the epicenter of one of the largest energy booms in the state's history. This is Catula, Texas, the county seat, a town which is steeped in the history of South Texas. One of the way stops between the Rio Grande and points north. For more than a hundred years, LaSalle County had been mostly agriculture and ranching country. Families for generations cleared the land, planted crops, raised cattle, but now that's changed. All because of the Eagle Ford Shale discovery, described as the largest oil and gas development in the world based on investment. Every day, heavy equipment trucks rumble over county roads as they head to and from oil and gas production sites. The roads extend for miles into every corner of the county. The Texas Department of Transportation is now offering a quarter of a billion dollars to be shared by counties for road repair caused by the traffic. The problem is, counties have to first prove a road is public before they can claim money to open, expand, or repair it. But which roads can the county of LaSalle claim? County Judge Joel Rodriguez says that's what LaSalle County is trying to figure out from maps and old records. We have a number of roads that are in this situation that we have to address. The problem is LaSalle County records, like those of many counties across South Texas, are vague or inconclusive, not clear. Take, for instance, this road. It's called the Hines Road, and for years, it's come to this juncture where it takes a sharp turn. Now, Judge Rodriguez says, He's not convinced that's the way the road ought to go. You have some people saying, yes, we have access to it, we want access, and then you have other people saying, oh, we're landowners, that, you know, we don't want it open. And if the judge has his way, he wants Hines Road extended onto this private property, slice two miles into it, all to end here. This lonely little gate at the end of a narrow path overgrown with weeds and tree limbs, signs of how little use it's had. Colby Hines says it's hard to understand how a politician can simply condemn a family's land on a whim and say it benefits the public. And to put this in simplified terms, the way I look at it is, is you've got a family that's been on that ranch since 42, 43, my family, and everybody's said the way it's been. Nobody ever came to the Hines family and asked if they had permission to use the road through our family ranch. It's not right. So far, Judge Rodriguez has tried twice and failed to seize the Hines property in the name of public interest. The first time, under the glare of cameras and lights, the good old judge realized he needed more time, he said, for engineers to study the records. We're not taking action on anything today. The attorney for the one family that wants the road didn't like the delay. In terms of what's happened today, can you describe what has happened? Nothing. They listened to a bunch of testimony and listened to the people who have an interest in the area as to whether or not they will open this portion of the road to the public. That's all they've done. Makes you wonder what's at stake for Judge Rodriguez in this land grab where he's placed himself in the crossfire. You see, during each of the last two public meetings of LaSalle County Commissioners, Judge Rodriguez becomes visibly irritated when his notion of the Hines Road is challenged. In fact, even though the very Texas Open Meetings Law bans discriminating against points of view with which he may disagree, time and again, Judge Rodriguez interrupts, argues against, and dismisses anyone who doesn't agree with him. Drawing us out. Okay, go ahead. Excuse me. Sorry. If you say it one more time, I ask you to be moved. Be moved. We're going to say, hey, we're just going to stop it. He takes the notion of bully pulpit to a whole new level, which is why other property owners in LaSalle County are watching closely. Landowners like Susan Story, who see property rights as sacred 
as the Texas Constitution itself. She and her family have long been connected to this land and understand why people fight fiercely to protect it. In our family, we've had this ranch since 1916. We've had to fight very hard to keep it. If the government officials decide that there's a need, there's a process that they can follow. And that's the fair process. When people start making up their own rules, that's when things get a little iffy. I think they need a refresher course on legislation and the rules of due process. And there's something more. Miguel Rodriguez, sheriff of LaSalle County, knows a land grab for a road to nowhere isn't just a tough sell even for the shrewdest politician. It can also be a dangerous road for first responders sent out in a call in the pitch black darkness of the night. So how does the top law enforcement officer in charge of public safety in LaSalle County, Texas, dance around saying what he knows to be true and yet not anger the judge? Is that a safety concern for you, sir? Probably so, but I'm not really aware about that, right? By the way, the very next day after our interview, one of the constables of LaSalle County, for some unexplained reason, got up to the podium and said something totally different from the sheriff. Uh, speaking on behalf of the uh, law enforcement and emergency services, the only road I know of access through the Frio River Basin would be that road in question. And to travel on that road would be would have a proper access for emergency services. Again, makes you wonder what was behind the sudden change of opinion over a Heinz Road extension to a dead end that shifted as fast as the South Texas winds in a storm. Why is extending one road, a road every property owner on either side of it opposes, except the one family that stands to gain an entrance to their land, one family, why would this be of concern to a county judge? Where is the public benefit? While the family that's owned the land for generations battles in court, where land disputes between neighbors usually get heard and resolved, why is this of such interest to County Judge Joel Rodriguez, who appears hell-bent on a land grab that will set a precedent in Texas, even if it means ignoring a state district judge's injunction to keep the road private? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to take a position. I don't know what the district court did. District court decided on an action they took. Again, Susan's story. This government was set up for good reasons, and it is a good government. It has its flaws but it works. And as long as you follow the path that the forefathers put in place, it's fair. So this last meeting, good old Judge Rodriguez pulled another Texas trick out of his hat, decided a title company ought to say whose road it is. Although even the motion, discussion and vote are as muddied as the reasoning offered. Is there a uh, second? I second. Is there any more discussion by the court? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Outside the courthouse, Jaime Rangel, attorney for the family whose land Judge Rodriguez wants to grab, said the end play is inevitable. I think they're trying to co cover themselves with the, mm -hmm. the uh, title company and, um, and then also through s &B. Ah, yes. Texas politics is at its best when some politicians are at their worst. Dilly dally, delay and deny, or say you didn't know and do it anyway. The fight to stop the road to nowhere is already costing one family tens of thousands of dollars to keep their land. But Judge Joel Rodriguez's pockets, which are the taxpayers' coffers, are deeper. And his political ambition is bigger. Maybe bigger than LaSalle County. Perhaps as big as South Texas itself. And if so, no telling how far he's willing to push in his quest for a land grab, or many, even if it goes against everything Texas stands for and may one day be the very act that ends his political road or detours it to a dead end as well. Reporting from LaSalle County, Texas, I'm David Cruz.